Brennan, and I'm one of the new uh, CTN postdoctoral fellows. Uh, my training is in infectious diseases and medical microbiology, so I just finished my training uh, this past year and started the fellowship on July 1st. Um, in terms of my research area and my research plans for um, this postdoctoral fellowship, I'm planning on doing, um, taking a look at sort of the uh, intersection between HPV, so human papillomavirus, and HIV. Um, particularly for my project, I'll, I'll be looking at correlates of HPV in both HIV positive and HIV negative uh, MSM, and that's based on an, an emerging team grant that's happening in Toronto. Uh, and the reason that's important is that because we know, I mean, there are a lot of unknowns within the domain of HIV and HPV co-infection, especially in the MSM population. And um, uh, so we know that, for instance, in, in HIV positive individuals, that HPV, uh, there, are, there are typically higher rates of infection, higher rates of persistent infection, and often people are, are infected with more strains. Uh, <clears throat> so it'd be important to take a look at um, sort of a similar population, so an MSM population, but looking at the correlates between both HIV positive and HIV negative uh, individuals. You know, though people, are, people who are HIV infected, uh, great strides have been made over the last 10 to 15 years in terms of treatment, so people are living longer and doing very well and morbidity and mortality have greatly decreased. We know that there are certain um, facets of their health that are really affected still. So, you know, we're seeing an increase in cancers, for instance, um, of all types, but uh, specifically of many HPV-associated cancers. So cancers of the uh, head and neck, but also cancers of the anal canal and of the genital areas. <clears throat> so that's a, 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 another reason why uh, this topic is important. and. Um, Finally, uh, another v uh, very exciting and emerging area within the uh, HPV, HIV uh, area is um, uh, the whole HPV vaccination issue. Um, and we really, you know, we have a little bit of data currently and we know that, um, you know, even the, the idea of HPV vaccination in males is still a little bit contentious even though uh, we're seeing approvals coming out and recommendations coming out stating that we should be vaccinating people, um, males. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for the HIV positive population, we're really still at a uh, very early stages. So we really don't have much evidence in terms of uh, what to do with these uh, individuals, especially older HIV positive individuals. Dates back to a really long time ago. I mean, I, even uh, predating uh, my medical school days, I actually got to spend some time in West Africa uh, working on a project there in an HIV primary care clinic. And um, throughout the years, I've, I've volunteered for a variety of aid service organizations. I've worked at uh, Casey House Hospice, which is a um, uh, hospice, uh, an HIV hospice and a uh, primary care uh, center in, in Toronto. So uh, it's sort of a long-standing passion of mine, and uh, it was, just seemed like a natural progression from my training uh, within internal medicine to infectious diseases, and now as a research fellow for the CTN.